Mr. Coyle, it's a pleasure. I think I'm gonna faint. Well, if you follow my direction, I'll do my best to catch you. In case you're free tonight. <clears throat> to Jay. Thank you for the hottest night of my life. Love, Harrison Coyle. There you go. I'll be waiting by the phone. Okay. Mr. Coyle, big fan here. Oh, yeah. I, uh, do a little writing myself. Do you? Yeah. yeah. such a hurry. Just waiting on my cab. You don't need no cab. Billy here to take you anywhere your little heart desires. Listen, buddy, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I was really depressed when I got here tonight, and I'm a lot more depressed now because I know there's going to be hell to pay for tomorrow. Oh, you don't fool me, girl. I saw you staring at me over the rim of your glass. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny because I can barely even focus right now. <laughs> well, then I'll just come in a little bit closer. Then, show you how good looking I am. <coughs> Back off. It's not very ladylike now, is it? No, and it's gonna get a lot less ladylike if you don't back off. I told you. Had enough?
What the hell does that mean? Chapter one. Search me. Lieutenant. I thought he looked familiar. Stiff. Bill Torkus. We nailed this animal on a murder charge last February. It didn't stick. Who is the victim? A local woman. Mother of three. Raped and left to die in the trunk of her car. As far as I'm concerned, someone did us a favor. So what about me? What about you? Well, this guy knows where I live. I could be in danger. Memorize this number. 911. McMahon, this isn't funny. This is the police department, Coyle. It's not a private security firm. Look, if you're really worried, huh? hire a bodyguard. You can certainly afford one. What do I pay taxes for? Yeah, hello. So, what do you think of our opening chapter, Harrison? Opening chapter? What are, what are you talking about? Who the hell is this? Your new writing partner. Hey, uh, hello? Hello? Come on now, act happy, say hi. It's nice to see you, Harrison. Hi, it's nice to see you, Harrison. Okay. You want some? Oh, no, no thanks. How do you, you, you actually live in this? Well, yeah, I'd say for someone with vertigo, sea level is just about perfect. How you ever survived as a cop is beyond me. Don't get too comfortable, I'm on my way out. Got a gig? None of your business. Where's your shingle? I thought P.I.'s had shingles. So to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Something's come up. I was hoping I could hire you. Not interested. Is this your gig? Mm. Give me that. It is. Give me that. It is your gig. I can't believe it. Your first time out, you've turned into Ace Ventura. Sorry, Nikki, I didn't realize you had company. Oh, I don't know if I'd call this company, but... I'll be around. Okay. Plutardo, babe. Bye. Plutardo, babe. <laughs> it's French. I know, I know. It's this guy that I'm worried about. Oh, give me a break. He's just a neighbor. Oh, I can see you've adapted to the local culture pretty quickly. <sighs> Coyle, what do you want from me? I told you I want to hire you. I told you I'm not interested. I don't need a handout. I'm doing perfectly fine on my own. It's not a handout. Look, somebody's been playing games with me, and I don't like it. Who? Some creep I met at a book signing. Obviously, my autograph wasn't enough for her.
Hey, Tony. Who the hell are you? Your worst nightmare. Picture's a little small, don't you think? <laughs> you want them to make it bigger? No, I, I don't want to overdo it or anything. I just, I, yeah, I think it could be, you know, a little bigger, yeah. Fine. I'll tell them to make it bigger. You don't think I'm being childish, do you? You don't mind, Harrison? I won't answer that question. How are we doing on hardcover, anyway? Hold on a second, I'm going cordless. How are we doing on hardcover? Number seven, holding steady. Who's at number six? Solomon Rushdie. Oh, great. Put a contract out of my life. I'll be at the top of the list, too. Can I go now? I'll tell them to make the picture bigger. Hey, the reviews are pretty good, don't you think? I only send you the good ones, Harrison. It's what agents do. Yeah? I've been a good boy again. Warehouse 5, East Docks. Hey, pal, listen. You and I, Harrison. We're gonna make an unbeatable team. Listen, I'm not interested in collaborating. I write my own damn books. Harrison, I left a little something there for you. What? Name's Tony Kandati. Another alleged rapist that slipped through the system. Good luck getting him down. Hey, what the hell is that on his shoulder? It looks like an envelope. I think it's for me. Oh, listen to this. It's time to take back the streets, America. The spacious skies from sea to shining sea. The country our fathers built land of the brave, home of the free. <laughs> I'd say your friend needs a little help in the writing department. Well, that's good, McMahon. Go to the head of the class. He's looking for a uh, collaborator. I'm going to need those now, Mr. Cole. Can I get copies? Uh, tomorrow soon enough? Yeah, thanks. Now, if there's one thing I hate more than a psycho killer, it's a psycho killer with a message. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, was... Who's that? My bodyguard. She got a sister? Hey, Nikki. Good of you to show yeah, up. Sorry, my car died. Then. What'd I miss? Oh, McMahon, this is Nikki Cruz. Nikki. How do you Lieutenant do? McMahon. Nice to meet you. Heads up, guys. Got press coming in. Oh, man, this is just what we need. Uh oh, come on, let's get out of here. Alana, long time. What are you doing here? Hey, you know me, I'm an old bloodhound. I see a cop car, I gotta chase it. Don't give me that. Two convicted rapists dead in the course of a week? That's a little more than a coincidence. That's alleged rapists. McMahon is uh, right in the car, right there. Everyone in this town? No, not everyone. What is it about middle-aged men and young women? Don't they realize how ridiculous they look? You're starting to sound like my ex-wife. <laughs> Which one? Both of them, come to think of it. All right, where are we going? Oh, to get you a new car. Hey, 
shit, kind of red. red. <laughs> wow, I like this one. You know, I've never had a convertible before. Yeah, you gotta watch the sun, though. You know that hole in the ozone isn't getting any smaller. Yeah. Howdy, folks. Hey, buying your daughter a car, I see. Mm -hmm. Gee, Daddy, can, can I have the CD player, please? Tell you what, you take 20% off this sticker price and we'll talk. Wait a minute, you're Harrison Coyle, ain't you? Yes. I was just wild about that book of yours, the one about the Blue Lake murders. I couldn't put it down. Thank you. You wait right here, Mr. Coyle. My boss is a big fan of yours. He's, he's gonna, well, he ain't gonna believe this. Oh. You just eat that up, don't you? What? All the attention. Hey, don't complain. It's gonna get you this crepe below sticker. Way below sticker. Hey, nice oh, you know me. I'm an old bloodhound. I see a cop car. I gotta chase it. The dead man has been identified as Tony Condotti, who was arrested last August in connection with the rape, torture, and murder of Gina Spiridakis. Miss Spiridakis was hanged to death, but evidence indicated that she had not done it herself. Charges against Mr. Condotti were subsequently dropped. This, this is the last day reporting for headline. for headline news. You're good, Alana. Mm. You should be doing the national news. Think so? Mm. I'd watch. Really? <laughs> <sighs> Hello? Harrison. Guess who? Oh, wow. It's you. <laughs> I just saw you on TV. You look great. I love your hair like that. Yeah, right. So, um, back in town. For good? Well, things didn't exactly, you know, work out. In Chicago. I hated it, and it was cold, and, well, I just, I missed it here. Oh, gee, well, I'm, uh, God, I'm, I'm speechless. You have somebody there, don't you? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> Tramp. Do you have a pen? Um, I'm at the Park Court townhouses. I, I know where they are. You do? Well, um, why don't you just swing by tomorrow morning? You know, like around 11 o'clock sound okay? Okay. And pick up some of those bagels. The little place next to the cleaners. Okay, I'll, I'll see you then. How was that? Huh? My ex-wife. And thanks for your help with the Jeep. Here's a book I think you should read. Nikki. Men have never grown up. about what you're gonna do? I'll probably go back to my old practice. Dr. Minkoff says he'd be happy to have me. And I'm sure a lot of my old clients will return. Won't there be abandonment issues? I mean, like, my shrink left me, but I found somebody better, newer, smarter, and nicer. 
<laughs> you look good, Sharon. Not as good as me, of course, but uh, not bad for an old broad. <laughs> this place is great, huh? This is nice. Yeah. I mean, this room could use some warming up. Don't you think? You're not getting the dirty. But you promised, Harrison. Sharon, do you know what those rugs are going for these days? Yeah, but you promised. No, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. I, I said that I would think about it. I heard differently. Yeah, Sharon, I, 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 oh boy, I gotta go. I got a, a meeting, a lunch meeting with a, a cop. Oh, about the case? Yeah. Can I come? No. So what we have are two dead rapists, both probably guilty if you believe the facts, but both walk. So we're looking for an angry man. Husband, boyfriend, father, brother? Yeah, well, the bad news is that there were over 1,200 reported rapes in this area in the past three years alone. Not to mention 23 unsolved murders involving women who were either raped or otherwise sexually molested before they were killed. 23? 23, that's right, with suspects in every case and not a single conviction. You know what I can't understand? His fixation with this book. What about it? Well, that he has a book at all, that he has this message. You know, most serial killers don't have messages. All they want is fame, and everything comes together for them when they get caught. But your guy, he's all message. He thinks you can put him on the bestseller list. It's time to take back the streets, America. Does that sound like a bestseller to you? Yeah, well, I could use a little editing, but big deal. I mean, think about the message. What about it? Well, it's not without merit. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to walk through the park, you know, without worrying about muggers? Look, let him write his own damn book. I, I don't want to be a part of his dirty little game. Well, you can play dirty, too. What would that accomplish? Well, it would shake him up, make him mad. And angry people make mistakes. Forget it. Now listen to her, Coyle. Right now, he's running things. He's going to kill again, and he's going to keep on killing until you do what he asks. Don't you think you ought to try to stop him before things get completely out of control? I got a bad feeling about this. Where's Plutardo? Shouldn't he be helping with that? I don't need any help. And his name's not Plutardo. It's Damien. It's not much better. Here. What is it? Present. Some block and a hat. Oh. Thanks. You get a lot more use out of those than that uh, book you left at my door. Oh, I was wondering when you were going to acknowledge that. I, mean, I, I don't get it. What's the joke? Am I supposed to be Peter Pan or something? Come on, don't take it so personally. I just thought maybe you could learn something. Uh, about myself? You gotta be kidding. There's nothing in that book for me. Oh, that's the adult response. You know, this is exactly why Sharon and I broke up. She was always analyzing me, but at least she was a shrink. Why do I have to take this from you? Oh, come on. You know, if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't bother. You care about me? Of course I care about you. Why does that surprise you? I don't know. You're always so closed off, you keep me at an arm's length. You always have to be tougher and better than everyone. I've been on my own for a long time. I'm just not that comfortable around people. Wasn't meant as a criticism. I didn't take it as a criticism. You did? No. That's one of the nice things about being a woman. We're so much more mature than men. Here she is. Harrison. Lana. Uh, you remember Nikki? Hi. So, where do you want to do this? I'll leave it up to you. As usual. Let's go over there, okay? This is going to be fun. The truth is, I've seen this a thousand times before. I mean, this is not new territory for me. When I, when I investigate for my books, I see this all the time. He, you know, he thinks he's different, right? Actually, he's just like the rest of them. Uh, Berkowitz, Bundy, Gacy, Dahmer. Just another big screwed up kid whose mommy didn't give him enough attention. So he comes up with this new angle, right? This uh, rapist thing. He thinks it's going to make him more interesting. And now he wants me to help him write his big book about his 
miserable little life. So he has been in touch with you. Then. Oh, not face to face. He's not that brave. No. He's just another sick puppy with unresolved sexual problems. Or maybe he's impotent. Maybe that's why he goes after the rapists. Or maybe he's jealous because he can't he can't function. Can I say that on TV? Yes. <laughs> Play games, Coil. I can play games. You told me you were gonna keep this quiet. So you cut the interview, huh? <laughs> Why would you do something like that? You think it makes the job any easier? Hey, it was, I, it was Sharon's idea. Sharon? But your ex is back in town. Yeah. Oh, this will be good. She's gonna have a field day when she finds out about Nikki. What? You think I'm sleeping with Nikki? Hey, I know you're sleeping with Nikki, man. Come on. I'm a cop. I, I sense these things, okay? Now, frankly, Harrison, I'm not a prude. But it bothers me. A girl is young enough to be your daughter. I Look, I hate to disappoint you, Jim, but... Uh... I'm not sleeping with Nikki. I'm not. Yeah. Harrison, that was great. You don't think uh, I overdid it, do you? Well, that part about him being impotent was a little over the top, but should work. He's going to be very angry. Yeah. Oh, look, got to jump. Could be him. Bye. Hello? Big mistake, Coyle. I ask you for a little help with my book. This is what I get? Big mistake. <laughs> Don't ask me to spend the night. Call your bodyguard. Did I startle you? Yes. But I'm all right now. What do you want? I think you know what I want. Well, I don't have much money here. Maybe a hundred dollars. Sure. Who are you trying to kid? I think we both know this is no rent breaking. Okay. Okay, why don't you just tell me? Cut your foot. Tell me, Sharon. 
Quit as a gun if you're not gonna use it. It's okay. You're a very beautiful woman, Sharon. Why did you and Harrison split up? As a therapist, wouldn't you say people give up too easily nowadays? Hmm? It's not too tight, is it? What do you want from me? From you? Nothing. Nothing. I'm not like that, Sharon. I don't enjoy torturing women. This is about that ex-husband of yours. I'm gonna teach him just a, just a little lesson. Harrison's gonna remember this night for the rest of his life. <laughs> Why don't we call him? Should we call him right now? Yeah, hello. Hello, Harrison. I have somebody here who'd like to say goodbye to you. Harrison. Sit still, sit still. What's wrong with your shoulder? Well, your ninja friend really had some moves. And you know, I don't think he picked him up watching Jackie Chan movies. He's the real thing. Hello, Sharon. And, uh, welcome home. guy told Sharon how he did enjoy torturing women. What about it? Well, I think that's the key. Torture. You see, both of the rapists that he killed got off on torturing their victims. To the left. Thanks. So it's not as random as it looks, huh? No, no, no. He's working backwards chronologically. Torkus was acquitted last October for lack of evidence. And Dottie two months earlier for the same thing. So if my calculations are correct, Selloway is the next victim. Dirk Selloway? Who wants to know? My name is Harrison Coyle. <laughs> right. Right. And I'm Dominic Dunn. I think you might be in danger. There's a lunatic preying on rapists. Hey, pal, I, I ain't raped nobody. 
You might think differently. How many times do I have to say it? I didn't rape anybody. We're not the ones you have to convince. I think you might be able to help us catch this guy. Look, you ever go near my ex-wife again, you crazy son of a bitch? I'll kill you, so help me God. Hey, you're the one who's playing games. I'm giving you a chance here. An opportunity to write the most important book of your life. I advise you to take it. I... You were right. You would have been the next victim. So what do you say? He wants me to start writing. thinking you look like you've seen a ghost he was here what he was in this what? house during the middle of the night he left this ah the opus he could have slit my throat no no no, no. he's not gonna hurt you coil he needs you how do you get past my alarm system are you kidding any idiot with access to the internet can learn how to disarm one of those things really yeah, sure I'll wire a car, start a fire, 
build a bomb. What are you doing? What is that? All sorts of fun things. Any coffee? Yeah, it's coming. What, what is that? Here we go. I knew it. I was wondering how he stayed one step ahead of us. Are you kidding? The SOB has been bugging me? Yep. I'll kill him. Where's that coffee? I swear I'm gonna kill him. Listening in on my private conversations is nothing sacred. America, where did you go wrong? You have become a nation of isolated strangers. Your people live in fear. Fear of each other. Fear of crime. Fear of the future. Fear that there is no future. Messages don't sell books. Yeah, it's catchy anyway. It has kind of a nice rhythm to it. Well, that doesn't sell books either. Stories sell books. Good stories sell books. What are you taking your coffee? Three sugars, a little bit of milk. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> he thinks we should train and arm every fifth citizen and turn them into <clears throat> undercover vigilantes. I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Well, maybe, but vigilantes sure would keep the bad guys on their toes. Yeah, Lou, it's me. Good morning. I, I need to ask you a favor. You want the picture bigger yet? No, no. I, look, I'm going to fax you over a couple of pages to the office this morning. You know the guy who's been hounding me? I got a hunch that he's tried to get published before. How sweet. Helping out a fellow writer. Hmm? Just look, get it to everybody you know. If anybody's read this thing, I mean, it's so preachy, they're bound to remember. I'll do what I can. Thank you. It's a good idea getting those pages to the publishers. Thank you. But you've got to be joking with those pajamas. No, they're from my ex. Liar. Sharon has better taste than that. The other ex, Linda. Listen, you got, you got any chocolate laying around here anywhere? What is it with you and chocolate? Don't you ever get fat? You know, I ran five miles this morning. Uh, would that be with potato? When was the last time you worked up a sweat? Oh, a couple of days ago with Yolana. Wow. Well, well, well. Hey, 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 hey. Give me that. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. So honestly, are you are you enjoying it? No, no, I'm not enjoying no. it. Not at all. No. I told you there's nothing in there that I can relate to. Oh, so you're just highlighting passages kind of at random. All right, look, okay. I admit it when I'm wrong. I value other people's opinions. I'm considerate. <clears throat> oh, okay, look, yes, okay. Maybe I'm a little chauvinistic and maybe I don't always express my feelings. Ugh. I went back to the library. Remember those 23 unsolved rape murder cases I told you about? 13 of them involved torture. That's a lot of ground to cover. Husbands, friends, fathers. I broke it down geographically. I will take the first seven. You can have the rest. That's it, Mr. Boyle. Thanks for taking the time. Sorry I couldn't help you. standing. What can I do for you? I was numb for about six months. Could hardly drag myself out of bed. 
I look at the clock on the stand beside me, and for the life of me, couldn't figure out whether it was day or night. It was, uh, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stir up any un unpleasant memories. No, it's all right. It uh, actually feels good to be talking about her again. I, I think about her every day. Probably will for the rest of my life. You know, one of the things that struck me about the whole horrible ordeal was how alone we all really are. Because uh, for five days, or, or she led the news. And uh, the day they found her body, uh, it was over. The story was over. And everyone forgot except me. A couple of our close friends, too. People here couldn't have been better to me. They were really nice. Yeah. Well, um, what exactly is it that you do for them? Print stuff mostly. Copywriter. Ads mostly in magazines, billboards, sides of buses. It sure takes a lot of talent. Not really. I like to think of it as bad poetry. <laughs> strange talking to him. You know, it brought back so many memories about my father. The numbness you feel at first, like you want to die. And the long road back, and the rage, and how hard it is to let go. You okay? Mm hmm Standing told me that he thinks about the killer all the time. Other guys probably out there walking the streets. He says he's trying to learn not to think about him so much because it just tears him up inside. It tears him up how? It's the rage. You know, it just, it sucks the life right out of you. It leaves you feeling completely drained. Like an empty shell. I like it when you're like this, Nikki. When you don't have to act tough around me. You know, this place has really good chocolate cake. Sure they do. Yeah. the next chapter? Oh, man. <laughs> My name is Jim Madrone. I raped, tortured, and killed Colleen Harris for it on April 14th, 1994. I'm sorry, Jim Madrone. Too much for that lead. Yeah, I can understand how he might use this guy's name, but how did he know that we'd be coming here? Did he call you? Somebody called us. You know, I'm taking an awful lot of heat on this thing, Coyle. What, what? You think this is my fault? Oh, great. Thanks, Jim. Come on. I'm really starting to get angry. So is he. What's that supposed to mean? He wants help with his damn book. Why don't you just help him with his damn book? Oh, sure. Why not? I'll spend the rest of my life collaborating with psychos against my will. Come on. It's just temporary until we can figure out who this guy is. Hello. Stop looking for me, Coyle. You're wasting our time. Look, what the hell do you want from me? You know what I want. Your talent. Your help. I'm listening. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. sharp. At the mall at Shoreham. Second floor, top of the escalators, there's a bank of payphones. Wait for me there. Come alone.
door and across to the other side of the mall. There's another a... bank of pay phones. We've got 30 seconds. Hurry up. I am. Tell her to get out of here. Hold on. Go on. Get out of here. He spotted you. Go on. Go on. Get rid of the wire. Okay. All right, now listen closely. I want you to cross to the south side of the mall. There's an exit there. Take the exit to the old railroad tracks. Follow the tracks down on LaSalle Street. LaSalle Street, that's two miles from here. That's right. I'll be watching you every step of the way. There's an old wooden church there. You can't miss it. I'll leave the back door open. Come on! Lift your shirt. Turn it in a circle. Good. Empty your pockets. I have a gun in my hand. Don't do anything you'll regret. Now say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Give me a break. 
Come on, say it. Where's your sense of humor? I don't have one anymore, particularly where you're concerned. Oh, now, is that any kind of a way to start a working relationship? Look, I'm here, okay? I came. Shh. Say what you want to say, and I'll be on my way. Why are you so hostile, Coyle? I'm giving you an incredible opportunity here. I picked you. I could have picked any writer in the country, but I picked you. And you expect me to be grateful? Yes, I do. Someday you'll thank me for this. Guess what? Today's not the day. I can see that. I'm waiting. You want to talk about your book? It's not just a book, Coyle. Don't call it a book. It doesn't do it justice. It's a Bible. It's the Bible for the 21st century. Oh, I, now I see why it's so preachy. Oh, now don't get smart with me. I know it needs work. That's why we're here. Work? It needs more than work. Look, you think you're the only guy in America who realizes this country is in trouble? Let me tell you something, pal. It is in trouble. Serious trouble. But it's still a democracy. You're talking about fascism. I've taken that into account. People won't care. Sacrificing a few of our civil rights is a small price to pay for taking back the streets. You still gotta give people something they want to read. You gotta humanize the book. What you've written is it, it's dry, it's dull, it's, it's... You know, you should talk about you and your loss. No! This is bigger than just me. It's bigger than any one man. All right, all right, all right. Look, I don't want to argue anymore. You'll help me? You stopped the killing? Yes. All right. Yes. I will help you. Thank you, Harrison. I knew you'd come through for me. I knew you'd see things my way. I have some more pages here for you. I want you to take these along with the ones I've already given you. We'll talk in a few days. How do I contact you? I'll contact you. Fine. I'm gonna leave now. I'll put the pages on the altar. You wait a few minutes, then you can leave. you are when you're writing. Georgios? Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. <laughs> come on in, come on. In. This is nice, this is nice, huh? It brings back some old memories. Yeah, mostly unpleasant, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh, nice. What is it? Uh, very expensive. Come on, sit over the table. Thought I would do my part to, you know, block your arteries. That reminds me, I think I should change my will. I think I still have you listed as my beneficiary. Don't change a thing. Ah. Ah, heaven. I can't believe you moved again. What? You don't like this place? No, I like it. Of course I do. I, I told you, I think it's stunning. But there was nothing wrong with the old place. I, I just, I keep getting these huge advances, and it makes me want to go out and buy things. Yeah. God, that dirty rug would look perfect in my townhouse. Saved by the bell. Hungry? Sure, starving. Come on in, join the party. I thought you were working. You remember Sharon, don't you? Yeah, hi. Hi. How you doing? It's good to see you again. So, what'd you bring? Hamburgers. Oh, great. With you two around, I'll be dead by the age of 45. Then I get the rub. And then you woke up. <laughs> How's it going? Well, my writing partner doesn't seem to understand the basics. 
I mean, take the Bible, for example. It's, it's filled with all sorts of entertaining stories, right? You got burning bushes, lepers, plagues, you got magic tricks. It grabs you by the throat, then it throws in a few lines about uh, coveting your neighbor's wife. But this thing is, it's, it's an endless sermon and it's endlessly boring. So is he called yet? Yeah, he wants the first chapter by Friday. Good, that gives us time. I have an idea. No, no, not another idea. I would love to hear it. All right. 93, there was a rape in Deep Cove. A 15-year-old girl on her way home from school is abducted by a drifter. John Tedesca? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, God, yeah. She was in a coma when they found her, right? Right, she still is. In fact, her parents just won't give up. And because she was never dead, Tedesca was never charged with the murder. Exactly. And? And Tedesca becomes eligible for parole in four years. How's that going to help us? I'll tell you how that helps us. That means we can get him out early for good behavior. I'm sorry, I don't follow. It's a ruse. Tedesca's not going anywhere, but we leak it to the press that he's out. And then we wait. And you think whoever's doing this is going to go after him? Are you kidding? Tedesca is made to order. He is the most vile kind of rapist. And if you think the average citizen is going to be up in arms, what do you think it's going to do to him? She's right. What is this, a conspiracy? Last time you had an idea, she agreed with you. Now you have an idea and you agree with her? Harrison, for once in your life, will you just listen? I mean, Nikki has a point here. This is exactly what this guy is talking about. You know, the fabric of society being torn at the seams. Oh, he won't be able to resist this. Yeah, neither will the press. Yep, that's a good thing. It'll just fuel his rage. Bad feeling. Oh, I hope it's not more food. Ilana. Hi. Hey. Hey. What are you? How are you? God, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Aren't you going to invite me in? Uh, no, I can't. I'm, uh, I'm working. You're with someone? No. No, not really. Liar. It's not what you, it's, it's just not, no, it's not what you think. It is, it is. Remind me never to sleep with you again, okay? Mrs. Tedesca. Well, he isn't here. Go away. Now, we know that. We just need to speak with you. Show me some ID. I'm, uh, Lieutenant McMahon. This is Detective Levish, Nikki Cruz. We are going to, uh, have to borrow your house. Excuse me? I really don't have time to explain now. We're gonna put you up in a very nice motel. I'll explain on the way. Thank you. Excuse me? The newspaper? There's an article on John Tedesca. Of course I saw it. How can we let this happen? Am I the last sane man in America? Uh, look, buddy, or whatever your name is, uh, I'd love to sit and chat, but I've been asked to do a profile on Mr. Tedesco for Esquire magazine. It's kind of a rush job, as you can imagine. So 
I'm putting the Bible on hold for a while. Okay. Coil. Hey, come on. It's not as if you're paying me. We had a deal. And we still do have a deal, deal but I got to make a living, right? All right. You want to play hardball, we'll play hardball. Well? It's hard to tell. He's certainly angry enough, but uh, who knows if he took the bait. Uh-oh. Here we go again. While demonstrations continue in front of City Hall, another group took to the streets here on Ringwood Avenue where Tadaska's mother lives. A spokesperson for the Department of Corrections said, and I quote, We have no further comment at this point. We are still reviewing the procedures which led to his early release. Ironically, Tadaska recently confided to a fellow inmate that he had raped nearly two dozen women before he was finally caught. This is Alana Bates reporting for WKPJ. Who figured that last little bit? You do something, Harrison, you do it right. I sure hope this works. So do I, for your sake. So how's it going? You tell me. Well, where's the goatee? So how long have you been here? Uh, about seven weeks. Seven weeks, that's it? Yeah. And you? I was born just north of here. Really? Uh-huh. You got family and everything here? Mm -hmm. no? My parents moved to Florida a few years ago, and my wife left me in April. He's not going to show. I'm sorry. Yeah. He'll show. Sound like they're on a date. Well, after a couple of dates with someone. What is wrong, Coyle? You sound jealous. You should know whether or not you've got a screamer. Yeah, dating. I don't know. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little out of practice in the, in the dating department. Laying it on a little thick, isn't he? I don't think you'll have much trouble. You wouldn't have any ideas on where to start, no. Close your mouth. <laughs> she thinks he's funny. Are you gonna finish your pizza or just sit here all night and pout? How many cards do you want? Drop the gun. Drop the gun or I'll break his neck. Oh, right, 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 right. Good. Good cop. Now kick it over here slowly. Kick it.
hell did he get in? Hey, you two. Hey. Hey. So, any luck with the hospital? Nope. Either he didn't hurt himself too badly or he's a doctor. And he patched his own wounds. Told you, we should have had more men at that house. You're getting to be a pain in my butt, Coyle. You know that? I ought to make you pay for Mrs. Tedesca's window. Oh, chill out, big man. Where'd you have a drink? I don't drink anymore. I liked you better when you did. All right. What now? <sighs> Maybe we should check all the butcher shops in town. Butcher shops? Yeah, he probably bought a big fat steak for his black eye. Very funny. I don't know. Maybe we should go back to the beginning, you know? Husbands, family, friends. Maybe we, maybe we missed something. I don't know. You think maybe you could lend us a couple of men? Everybody on the list, except this one guy. Who? Matthew Standing over at uh, Dunn Schwartz or whatever it's called, the advertising agency. He called in sick this morning. Wait, what, 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 what was that you just said? Matthew Standing, that's his name. No, no, the advertising part. Dunn Schwartz, that's where he works. Great. Great, great job, man, thanks. You want some coffee? No. That's it, you don't? Want to hear anything else? Anything worth hearing? No, sir, not a thing. All right, great. There you go. See you later. Okay. Thank you. Nikki, you remember Matthew Standing? Yeah, he's the guy from the advertising agency, right? He phoned in sick this morning. Yeah? Well, you remember what you said about his writing? You said it was catchy. You said it had a certain kind of rhythm to it. The operative word here is advertising. Oh, my God. That's right. He's a copywriter. He writes. You remember what he looks like? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what, Nikki? I think we just got lucky. This is a file tape from a year ago, August. Listen. Anything further on the disappearance of your wife? I'd just like to say... I'd like to say to whoever has my wife... Voice of one crying in the wilderness. Megan? What's that? From the book of Matthew. Please don't hurt her. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after she righteousness. She the world to me. She's all I've got. But they shall be filled. What can I call? Mr. Stanley, will you be giving an interview later? Matthew, I know this is difficult for you. Is there any truth to the rumor that a body has been found? A jogger found the body early this morning, and police subsequently identified the victim as Megan Standing, missing for almost a week now. According to a source in the police department, Mrs. Standing had been tortured and repeatedly raped. She had been dead for close to 48 hours. This is Alana Bates reporting for WKPJ. I'm going to give you a call. You're going to get the exclusive, but so help me if you jump the gun, innocent people will die. I give you my word. I'll wait for your call. I think Matt should have been here already. Uh, I didn't call him. You what? Come on, Nicky, we found this guy ourselves. Let's nail him. No, no! Coil! Coil! We have to call McMahon. Okay, you're right, you're right. Hurry, just get the phone, it's in the car. Lieutenant McMahon, please.
in, Coil. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Come on in. I've been waiting for you. You've been a bad boy, Matthew. But you know something, pal. What you've had to live through, what you've had to endure, I couldn't even begin to imagine. But it doesn't condone any of this. No, no, you, you don't understand. The book came first. Yo, know, maybe for you it came first. For me, it doesn't even rate in the top ten. Well, then I feel sorry for you. You care more about yourself than you do about America. You think a book is the answer? You think a book is going to save our country? Matthew. You've ruined everything, Coyle. Matthew, what do you think you're going to accomplish? Take a look around, would you? If you'd only listen to me, we wouldn't be here right now. This isn't the way the world works, Matthew. You can't go around killing people, no matter how much you think they deserve it, and you can't make people do things they don't want to do. I was giving you an opportunity to write the most Please. important book of your life. You keep saying that, but it's your book. Oh I could God. care less about it. You see, there, that's the problem right there. Nobody cares. Everybody's only looking out for themselves. You're right. People are out for themselves. That's our nature. Is that what you believe? It's not that people are against you. It's simply that invariably, people look out for themselves first. Standing! Drop it! Get back! I'll kill him! I swear to God, I'll kill him! Get back! Go on, Nikki, get out of here! Go, Nikki, go, get out of here! Get out of here! Listen, Matthew, we're on your side. We can help. I don't need help. America needs help. Goodbye, Coyle. See you on the other side. No, Matthew, no! Don't! Don't! You don't!
You know, I can't help but think about what he told me that day in the ad agency. About how soon the world forgot and how alone he felt. What was it Robert Frost said? One man can't keep a house? You seem to manage pretty well. Oh, those days are in my past. I'm all grown up now. No more chasing women. Right. No, I'm serious. I'm a new man. I better go. Find that lost dog yet, Ace? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. On my dime? Mm. You still owe me 900 bucks. You'll get it. You really think I should write his book, huh? I definitely think you should write that book. It's got everything. It's got uh, tragedy, suicide, revenge, and a message. Can't hit him over the head with the message. No. It's your book now. Harrison, you can write it any way you want. Got any plans tonight? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I have a date. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've had a date. I've got a date with Bob Levish. Bob Levish? Yeah, Bob Levish. You know, the, the cop who was on the stakeout with us? The one who, who got shot. Oh, yeah, of course. Bob Levish. The one whose wife left him last April. Give him my best. You're around, Coyle. See ya. Nikki. It's a first date. Don't get carried away. <laughs>